everyone, Signalator here. Welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West. Why does it keep making me want to make me talk to the Pitmaster? All right, let's see if we can solve this little mystery. Uh, boys, can you deal with that lot up ahead? Thanks. Don't see many Nora out in these parts. Oh, well, now you have. Thank you. I mean, it says I've completed it, so why do I need to talk to him again? Anyway, let's go see what this is all about first. I'm curious. Hey, hey there, flame hair. Ah, come to revel in some strike, sister. Let me set the board. I was just passing by I mm, first timer huh don't worry about it I'll go easy on you you got any pieces uh no well aren't you in luck then I got an extra set a Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West sit 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 I'll run you through it in a hot spark I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards too all right so I get I get some cow of it obviously Alright. Let's up. Alright, let's start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Mm -hmm. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points and to win the game you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines right it can be tricky remembering the details of every machine so we use these notes to keep track of them you see Just... that number on the top right corner mm -hmm. that there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine notes also tell you how far a piece can move Okay. How powerful their attacks are. Two, two, okay. The distance they can strike from. One space away, okay. And of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. Okay. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Okay. Easy oh. enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round. So go ahead and pick a second machine. Oh, it's going to make me just do that. Okay. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close enough to attack. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. 
A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Yeah. Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? Yep. You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. All right. The downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now, some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. All right. That's about it for your turn, then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there, and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. I see. Now, okay. Red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes that can be a good thing. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. I see. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. You know, I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping oh, no need to thank me always a pleasure to help out new strike players now if you feel like playing a real game i've got plenty of other boards 
I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. All right, we're a step closer to mastering the game of Machine Strike. All right, I think this I'll probably just do. Uh, offline. We've got the basic idea down, so we know what this is like. Don't be a stranger. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't know why you keep defaulting to that, because we're, we're done with you. Oh, I have a skill point. Uh, what are you? Ocean proficiency. Carry more. Yep, yeah, let's do that one. Perfect. Around the Fern West is a legendary attack master. Uh, and the Desert Clan's Mark. Okay, so there's something I haven't done there, but. That can. Uh, that again, I'll do in my own time. Unless something this unless there's some story relevance to it, then yeah, I'll do that offline. Right, let's head back to Baron Light then. Missy. Missy. Alright. Let's uh, push this story on a bit, shall we? Sir? What? There's Erend. Looks like he's had a few. Oh, that's one way of getting up, I think. Your impatience does not hasten the Tanakh, Nora. Only our annoyance. Well, thanks, but I've waited long enough. It's time to go. Absolutely not. This embassy depends on diligent adherence to... You shall not! Keep telling yourself that. Someone approaching! On a machine! Open the gates, please. Do not let her through that gate. That is a direct order. Sorry, can't do it. I'm asking nicely. Hey, Bar. Hi, Aaron. Uh, What's happening? Orders. I know the usual. Aloy wants something. People Open try to stand in her way. It's not going to work. Oh, that's it. Arrest her. I'd like to see you try. Supporting fire? Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. Hey, nose off. You stupid bastard. You think you got the authority to keep that door shut in the savior of Meridian's face? What, what do you think Sun King of Vod is going to do when he hears what you did? Promote you, huh? Let it through, boys. <laughs> Saving the world. Forget something back in Meridian? Look, Varl. It doesn't matter. Made it just in time. I'm not gonna have to do this whole game with you, Val. No offense, but more of a solo guy. So this tribe that Murad told us about, the uh, Tanakh, we need their permission to go west? Yeah, well I figured it'd be nice if they weren't trying to kill me the whole time. 
But this embassy hasn't started yet. We're just gonna barge in? Just no more politics. No more delays. Oh well. Now at least you have some backup. I guess I do. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's see what's going down. That is the line between East and West. Cross it and die. Hold on now. Let's take it easy. None may walk this valley until our signal sounds. That was our accord with the Karja. I'm not Karja. I came here on my own to ask for rite of passage. But they opened the gate for you, did they not? What is the meaning of this violation? Why send a child? Do they want to parley or not? <laughs> the Karja can't be trusted. This is no. Forget the Karja. This has nothing to do with them. I need to go west to save lives. Maybe even yours. The only lives you can save are your own. By turning back. Now. Hold! She's telling the truth about one thing. She's not Karja. She's a Nora from the Savage East. And if she seeks to save lives, should we not listen? Let me speak to him. One last favor for a fellow marshal before he's taken away. A fearless, red-headed Nora. You must be the so-called savior of Meridian. Just Aloy. I am unyielding for Shav. Once of the Karja High Command, last of the Army of the Setting Sun. You'll have to forgive my comrades. Tensions are high. This embassy is a delicate affair. They're about to return me to the Sundom, a gesture that might help soothe painful grievances. And now you arrive, unheralded. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just need to go west. So you say. I might be able to help, but I need to know why. Along with some assurance that I won't regret it. I've never seen markings like those on a Karja before. The Karja Sea Ink is decoration. For the Tanakh, it is much more. A litany of deeds. A record of vanquished enemies. Looks like you've vanquished quite a few. I've fought my share of battles. But I feel that my life, like my markings, is only half complete. This side shows my martial deeds. Before I die, I'd like to see the other half marked with the laurels of peace. How did you come to be among the Tanakh? It's quite a story, but not a quick one. Though I suppose neither of us is going anywhere before the embassy begins. Are you sure you want to hear it? Sure, why not? I guess we have time. Very well. I marched with Sun King Jaron's raiders when they came west, hoping to moderate their worst impulses. I failed, of course. They committed unspeakable atrocities, stirring the Tanakh. When the clans overran our forward encampment at Cinnabar Sands, I stayed behind to help the last stragglers evacuate. I was taken prisoner. I didn't make it easy for my captors, mind you. <laughs> and they paid me back in kind on the journey to their capital. I lost so much blood on the way that I was white as a corpse when they threw me before Chief Hikaro. I thought I was dead for sure, so I resorted to desperate measures. So when you met the Tanakh chief, you did something desperate. I kept my ears open as the Tanakh dragged me along, and I heard mutterings about a kind of trial by combat that they revere. So, 
When they flung me at Hakaro's feet, I demanded this right, called the Kurut, thinking that by winning I could request a boon, my life or even my freedom. The other Tanakh howled, but Hakaro stared them down, and then his gaze fell upon me. Evidently, he appreciated my ingenuity. He allowed me to participate in the Kurut. Cool Little did I know what I was in for. You said the cool route is a Tanakh's trial by combat. Yes. But it is no ordinary trial. It doesn't pit men against each other, at least not directly. Instead, the combatants fight machines in a great arena, and only the strongest survive. Believe me, it is no easy thing to stare down a charging machine while hundreds around you scream for blood. I know more about that than you might think. Do you? Well, then you have my respect. Like you, I lived through it to claim my prize. I had hoped for freedom, but... Well, that wasn't on offer. Only service to the chief. You wound up serving the Tanakh chief. The winners of the Kul Root must serve the chief as his marshals. You mentioned that word before. What does it mean? Well, the word itself refers to a kind of protective spirit from the ancient past. In practice, Marshals are Hikaru's roving lawgivers, part magistrate, part judge, part executioner. I won my place among their ranks and served as honor demanded, but many Tanakh still spat on the ground when I walked by. But they did, until I started forcing them to the ground to grind their faces in it. I guess that's one way to deal with it. As you may have noticed, violence is the native tongue of the Tanakh. To survive, one must master it. The truth is, though, the Karja speak it too. More than they should. I can't blame the Tanakh for hating them. So then, are you still Karja? Part of me, yes. Always. But there is much to admire about the Tanakh. Especially their chief. I've heard stories about what it was like before his reign. Three clans always at war, constantly slitting each other's throats. Hikaru and the marshals have crafted a delicate peace. And now he looks to the future. Who knows? Maybe that future will include cooperation with the Karja. The Karja talk about Hikaru as if he's a monster. The Karja feel compelled to demonize him if only because he swept them from the field. It is true that he is fearsome. When I was first taken before him, I thought he would flay me alive. But he is no bloodthirsty tyrant like the Mad Sun King was. I think that if you were fortunate enough to meet him, as I was, you would find that he only wants the best for his people. I hope you do speak to him. I'm sure you'd interest him. So, that's my story. You're the first Easterner to hear it, but not the last. The Karja need to know what I have learned. Yeah, the way you talk about the Tanakh is a lot different than how they do. Are you glad to be going back to Meridian? Oh, I'll admit that I wouldn't mind sleeping in a feather bed or sipping wine from the southern vineyards, but I have another goal in mind. As someone who knows the Tanakh and the Karja, I'm in a unique position to advocate for both. If Sun King Avad is amenable, my hope is to establish a lasting peace. The Tanakh don't seem that peaceful. They're not, as a rule. But these are difficult times. Chief Akaro knows that survival often requires change, even if that change means putting aside centuries of war. Makes sense. You asked why I need rite of passage. I'll tell you, but you won't like my answer. Six months ago, the world almost ended in Meridian. That threat still exists. It's getting worse every day, much worse. Calling down storms, poisoning the water, enraging the machines. The source of it all has gone west, and I'm the only one who can stop it. 
I've seen the signs. And I've heard tales of incredible occurrences in Meridian. An army of demons vanquished by a red-haired champion. So I'm inclined to believe you. The burden of your task is written across your face clearer than any mark of mine. I'll grant you this. To serve as proof of your right to travel into Tanakh lands. A task so important. And it's just the two of you. Take it from one who aspires to be a diplomat. Allies are essential. Chief Akaro knows the West better than anyone. He may be able to help you. He can be intimidating to others, but don't let that deceive you. He is a man of his word. Maybe. If I need him. Your choice. You can find him at his palace, past the mountains to the southwest. Tell him I sent you. And he'll listen to Look! Me. The Sky Clan's banner! Marshals. It wasn't easy, but I brought the Sky Clan with me. And the commander? Uh, no. I could only convince a few. He isn't yet aware we left. We have banners from all three clans. If there are fewer from the Sky Clan, it can't be helped. He's right. Sound the horn. What's going on? Not all Tanakh can stomach the idea of parley with the Kaja. But enough have come for us to begin. Then I'll be on my way. No. The other marshals will not permit it. You wanted safe passage, you have it. After. All right, here we go. The Karja have opened the gates. As the sun rises over a land at war, so too can it set over a land at peace. Today is such... Hear me, marshals! You who claim to be Tanakh! Regala. Chief Akaro's biggest mistake. A rival whom he should have killed. You have forgotten that our people were born in blood. The blood of the Karja. Instead, you pledge your spears to a chief who conspires with the enemy. Hikaru has betrayed us. The embassy is proof. And all of you marshals are his accomplices. For this, I condemn you to death. You'll need more than toothless threats to intimidate us. Exile. Oh, that's new. Lancers, pull him up. Oh, here we go. They're riding machines. Where'd they learn to do that? Silence. Vashav, come with us now, or not at all. Archers, light them up. Oh, flame arrows. I, I want some of those.
tank to the Kaja. Run them down. the way Okay, here we go. Oh, 
She's hit! Still in this fight. That was quick. Blow. Jet. God damn it. Who are you? You, Outlanders, I'll skin you both. Chief, grant me the honor of this challenge. Granted. Anyone else? Your turn. Come down here and face me. No. It was an honorable challenge. You've earned your life today. Comrades. Mark this day. Today you have decimated the marshals. Slaughtered the Karja. So begins our war, Bunny Karma. Ah! Move out! Oh, oh shit. Without me, aren't you? Oh, he shaved. Guess I'm stuck with Aaron for now. Come on, I'll take you back to the fort. That was quick.
It's salvage time, boys. Yes, I was wondering if I was going to take his stuff. Sort out this mess. Seems like the Tanakh have a civil war in their hands. That sounds about right. The marshals weren't expecting Regala to attack. And the entire Karja delegation was slain. Nozar, Vladis, Peshav. A massacre. What will you do now? I have to head west. Hopefully, this rite of passage is still good. For what I'm after, I'll cross all of Tanakh's territory if I have to. Then you have a long road ahead of you. This is only the threshold of the Forbidden West. The Tanakh's true domain lies over the mountains that border Plainsong, home of the Utaru tribe. This isn't Tanakh's territory? All that out there? That's no man's land. It was supposed to be neutral ground, though obviously this Regala ignored that. Her rebels approached from the north, with all those machines they were riding. They must have made camp up that way. The rebels were riding bristlebacks. And there were bristlebacks in the Daunt. Are you saying the rebels let them into the Daunt? How would that even be possible? I don't know. But it's worth looking into. While you're at it, there were a number of Karja and Asuram who went out there before the gates were shut for the embassy. Maybe you could check in on them. See if they're all right. I can keep an eye out. Is there a tall neck somewhere nearby? A tall neck? There's that one, over there, near the Utara border. But why... It's, uh... It's hard to explain. It'll help me get the lay of the land. If you say so. Is there anything else I can tell you before you go? <laughs> oh, God damn it! Right. Fashav called Regala a rival. Someone that knocked the chief should have killed. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he should have. She's obviously a huge threat. Her attack was coordinated and precise. Until you got in her way, that is. They knew the lay of the land. And they knew Fashav was going to be handed over at the embassy. If the Tanakhs weren't expecting her, she must have spent months gathering an army in secret. They had to have made camp nearby. Somewhere they could lie low until the perfect moment to strike. About Vashav. <sighs> the man was taken captive by the Tanakh. Survived for years out in the West, only to die just short of the Sundom. It's a cruel end for a good soldier. There was more he wanted to do. He spoke of advocating for lasting peace between the Karja and Tanakh. Too late for that now. What will happen to him? His body will be carried back to Meridian. As a cousin of the Sun King, he will be accorded official rights and buried with honor. No soldier could ask for more. It's too bad about Nazar and Fuadis. At least Nozar went down fighting. As for the Sun Priest, well, no one deserves to go out that way. I'll make sure they're given proper funeral rites. It's the least I can do. Do you think the Karja will take action against Regala? Seems like you'd have common ground with the Tanakhs. An expedition of the Karja army into the west could be taken as the start of another invasion. Sun King Avad won't risk it. That said, we can't allow ourselves to be caught unaware by an attack like that again. You said the Tanakh's lands are far to the west. What can I expect to find between here and there? Well, as I mentioned, you've got a stretch of wilderness known as No Man's Land, and then New Taru farmlands. Past that are the Tanakh. Their territory is split into three clans. Desert, Lowland, and Sky. Right. I saw their banners at the embassy. The Desert Clan is closest. 
Ooh, vicious lot. Where everyone else sees an inhospitable wasteland, they see a challenge to dominate. Somewhere beyond the desert is the tribe's capital and the territories of the other two clans. You don't sound certain. I've only heard the stories. During the Red Raids, the Karja army tried to push into Tanakh territory. But the United Clans rose up against them, forced them all the way back to the dot. So no one except the Tanakh really know what's beyond the desert. <laughs> Maybe the scholars do, back in Meridian. All those scrolls have to be filled with something, right? Trey? You mentioned the Utaru tribe. Their lands are between here and the Tanakh further west? That's right. Plain Song is their home. They're a peaceful bunch, at least compared to the Tanakh. More taken to farming than fighting. It's hard to imagine a bunch of farmers surviving in the Forbidden West. Make no mistake, they have a fierceness all their own. When the Karja were pushed back during the Red Raids, their warriors chased ours through the burning fields of Plain Song. The Sun King has made several overtures of peace to them as well, but so far, they've declined. If they're so peaceful, why decline? Don't know. I heard they have their own troubles to deal with. Something about a food shortage. You'd think that'd make them open to trade, but... No. They just want to be left alone. I see. This area is no man's land. That it is. The Tanakh used to attack anyone past Baron Light on sight, but after Avad overthrew the Mad Sun King, he reached out to the other tribes to offer reconciliation. The Tanakh agreed to a neutral border zone as part of the peace talks. Karja and Asaram have been striking out into the area ever since. But now, it seems like Regala and her rebel army have moved in. Well, I'd never call no man's land safe, even in the best of times. The ancient ruins of the Southwest are a testament to that. Remnants of some forgotten war. You said there were others who went out when the gates were open before. Like, who? Well, in addition to the salvagers that just went through, there were a couple of other parties of Asurum Delvers. Even saw two Karja scholars trekking southwest with an Asurum crew. Not sure if they're exceptionally brave or just foolhardy. All right. I think... Yep, that's everything now. I need to be on my way. Then I wish you luck. The gates will always be open to you should you wish to return. And don't worry about your friends. We'll get them patched up. I appreciate it. Sun, watch over you, Aloy. I hope you find what you're looking for. Bloody hell. Well, this episode has basically just been an extended... Uh, ...cutscene, essentially. Let's do some scavenging. Scavenging, rather. Uh, Shield Wing is an energy boost uh, based glider. Repurposed from machine technology, hold square one in the air to deploy the glide, tap circle to stop gliding. Going. Nice! Oh. This is the Forbidden West. A whole new frontier to explore. The coordinates from the spire should lead to silence in Hades. And just maybe the backup of Gaia. It won't be easy out there. The blight, the storms, Regala's machine riders. But I'll have to push through it all. Find a way to fix the world. Like Elizabeth would. Yeah, don't worry. Let's get all stocked back up. Oh, I used a lot of my health in that fight. Good spot to test the shield wing. While I climb down, and I can glide. Let's not let all these go to waste, though, yeah? The woman who led the ambush, Regala, had a lot of 
machines under her command. She did one indeed. Person who has that kind of knowledge. Silence. But what's his angle? Why help to knock the rebels? Who knows? He is not a very good man. He is a very bad man. Hey, anything else? Yep, you. Oh, Jesus. There's a lot to salvage here. No. Hey, Lloyd. What do you need? I need you to sod off so I can. I need to be going. Of course. Good luck out there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. There we go. That's what I wanted. No offense, dude, but you could talk the hind leg off a charger. I saw a campfire somewhere over here. Right. I know this hasn't been much of an episode. It's been mostly cutscenes and chatting, but. That's the nature of how these things work out normally. Hang on, let's just quickly grab all this. So on this note, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this, guys. If you liked it, like, subscribe, ding that bell. I've been Sigma later. This has been Horizon Forbidden West, and I'll catch you next time. Take care now.